session. Uh, good morning and praise the Lord. It's another beautiful day that God has given unto us. I welcome you this Thursday morning to our morning devotion. Uh, we give God all the glory that he is taking good care of us in this week. We just praise his holy name. I am Beatrice Cheriot and I thank God for another opportunity to be able to share with you again this morning. Before we share, I request that we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that once again, Lord, you've given us the opportunity to share your word. Jehovah, we bless your holy name because from Monday you've been speaking to us concerning being men and women after your own heart, Jehovah. This is what we desire more than anything. And we pray, Lord, that as you continue to study this, you continue to help us, you'll continue to give us an understanding that comes from you because I know you are able to do it, our Father. Therefore, be glorified this morning in this devotion, for we pray in Jesus' name. I uh, feel most welcome from wherever you're listening uh, to us from. I would wish to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this morning devotions with your loved ones so that they get blessed the same way you're getting blessed. We are looking at the topic, a man or a woman after God's own heart. How? What does it take to become a man or a woman after God's own heart? And we've talked about the character of David because this testimony was given by God about David that I have found in David a man after my own heart. And we've looked at faith as one of the characters that David had. David had a lot of faith in God. David uh, really trusted God. David loved God so, so much. And those are some of the characters that made him to be called or that made God to give a testimony of him as a man after his own heart. Allow me to read the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 7. I'll start from verses 12 and I'll read it very fast up to verse 18. I'll be looking at verse 18, but allow me to read from verse 12 so that we are able to pick up uh, the story as to why David spoke these words, uh, which will lead us to the next character that David possessed that made him to be referred to as a man after God's own heart by God himself. The Bible says, I'm reading the King James Version, this is what the Bible says, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shall fall asleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Verse 15 says, But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. 17 says, According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then 18, where I want us to really look at Kinley. David says this, then, uh, then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought uh, me here? Um, as a child of God, at times in our lives, we find that things happen to us and we want to feel proud of the way you know we have achieved at times you achieve so much and you feel that you know you have made it in life but i love david i love the heart of david uh which brings us to his fourth character david was a very humble man he had humility in himself and you know that, that is where, you know, after all th that I have read to us this morning, you know, the achievements that David had made. You know, if he was a human being like some of us today, he would sit back and, you know, brag. But David realizes that pride is one of the things that made King Saul to, you know, like be disqualified by God. 
and you know he 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 is so humble to the point that after Nathan has you know testified of what the Lord has done and even given him an assurance of what God was going to do even to his son Solomon was going to take the throne after him David affords to go back and tells God that you know he sits before God <laughs> I love I love this bit of David, you know, going and um, you know sitting before God. I think this is the reason as to why God calls him a man after my own heart. That even he was even qualified to sit before God. I don't know which people you sit before after all your achievements in life. Which people do you sit before, and what do you say before these people as you sit before them? David sits before the Lord and says. Who am I? Who am I, O oh Lord God? And what is my house? You know, it's like, like telling God, who am I? What is my family? He's asking God as if he doesn't know how much he has achieved. Uh, you know, Paul says that he counts, uh, is it Paul or, 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 or Solomon says, he counts all as vanity for him to achieve that which the cross has brought in his life. So Paul says he counts all vanity. And that is what David did. He counted all his achievements as vanity for the excellence of God in his life. And that made Paul to become someone who really had a lot of humility before God. This morning, I want to encourage you from wherever you are listening to, uh, 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 to us from. In life... God has promised that he's going to bless us. God has promised that he's going to make us succeed in whatever we lay our hands to do. And you know, uh, Isaiah 8 verses 18 says, uh, as for me and my children, we are a sign and a wonder. That is what God is going to do, just the way he did with David. He made David to become a sign and a wonder. That is what God is, God is going to do to us, together with our families and those of our households. I want to encourage us this morning that for us to be said to be men or women after God's own heart, even after we have achieved everything that God is going to enable us to achieve, I want to encourage you to exercise humility because the Bible tells us that um, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. That is what the word of God tells us. So if you need grace in your life and you know grace, grace is usually something that is able to lift your standards and take you to a place that you never imagined you could reach. It causes you to sit with graces that you have never imagined. So for us to be able to, uh, to achieve, um, you know, humility in our lives, for us to be able to achieve God's grace in our lives, let us pray and ask God to give us humility. And we get humility through through the Holy Spirit of God. When we look at Galatians chapter 5 and verses 22, uh, this, this, this verse talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And humility is one in the package of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit, not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It says, uh, Galatians 5 verses 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith, 23 says, meekness, temperance, again as such, there is no law. Now, humility is what is referred to as here as meekness. So, for you to be able to reach a point of being humble, even after you have achieved a lot in life, it takes the Holy Spirit of God, who is our teacher, to teach you, to train you, not to, you know, exalt yourself, even after you have achieved, but exalt God. When that happens in your life, when the Holy Spirit works in your life and causes you to be humble, even after you will have achieved like David did, you will sit before God and tell God, God, who am I? Who are my members? You know, you will still be able to come and sit in humility. The other thing that humility does that is portrayed a lot in the life of David is this common verse that I know uh, we are used to. Personally, I love it so, so much. Uh, that is found in the book of Second Chronicles. We use it a lot when we are doing repentance. Eh? So in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7, and verses 14, 
There's something that catches my eyes there. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know, David had learned the art of humbling himself before God. And you know, he knew it, that it is only in humility that you will be able to humble yourself before God. It is only in humility that you will be able to seek God, you know, with a sincere spirit. It is only in humility that you will be able to turn from your wicked ways. Otherwise, you, you will be so proud to give excuses as to why you did what you did. But David was so humble to the extent that he chose to, you know, just humble, you know, humble himself and allow God to have his way in his life. I want to encourage you this morning that as you continue in your walk of faith, desire, desire humility, desire to remain humble before God. Like I've said before, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Desire to be humble before God. It doesn't matter the height to which God take you, but desire that you will remain humble before him so that he's able to lift you up even to standards that you never imagined. I encourage you to observe the life of David and just tell God that God, I wish that even after I have achieved everything that I, I wanted in this life, I will still remain humble. It is in that humility that even after you have achieved all that you, you used to come for to church, for example, every Sunday or any time you got time to, to come to church and, and, you know, just have your time with God. It is It takes humility that even after you would have achieved, even after God would have answered your prayers, you still remain humble coming to church. So I pray this morning as you listen to the sound of my voice that God will give you the grace to remain humble. God will give you the grace to continue seeking him. God will give you the grace to sit under his instructions because it takes humility for a man or a woman to sit under the instructions of God. If you are proud, you would always feel like Whatever you are being told, you already know. Whatever you are being told, you already experience. But when you are humble, you will even want to, you know, sit and listen. Uh, um, I, I love, I love, I'm a teacher and I love those children. You know, they are sharp children in class. But even when you write one plus one, they still do their calculations rather than one who will ask, teacher, you know, one plus one is two. That takes humility for even such a child to be able to listen. So at times in our lives, we know how things are supposed to be done. But for you not to be able to show how much proud you are, it takes humility for you to be able to handle something in a way that is going to portray you, a way that is going to you know, bring out your character of humility before you. So I pray that as we continue to live in this life, let us remain humble. It doesn't matter the, the heights in which we have risen in life, but remain humble because God is able to do that to us. I urge you this morning that as you go about your day-to-day -day activities, even in your place of work, desire to be humble. Desire to be humble. It doesn't matter the ranks that you hold in those offices. It doesn't matter how much you've accumulated in your business. Remain humble so that... The, 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 the verse that says God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble will not catch you on the wrong side. It is my prayer this morning that you have been blessed by this broadcast. May God continue keeping you. May God continue doing great and mighty things in your lives. Uh, we meet again tomorrow uh, in the morning to just encourage ourselves again as concerns the character of David who is a man who was, God was able to give a testimony about that I found in David, a man after my own heart. It is humility that was able to make God testify about David. That even when the prophet came to him and told him, you know, David, you have done this, he was still able to, you know, go before God and tell God that I know I have sinned against you and against only you. It takes humility for a king. Remember David was a king. He was not just any other common person. So if a king 
could humble himself and repent and tell God that, yes, I know I've sinned against you and only you. What about you and me? Let God help us that we will remain humble all the days of our lives. God bless you. God keep you. God sustain you. See you tomorrow. Let's pray even as we close this broadcast in Jesus' name. Father, we honor you and we appreciate you. We want to thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you have given unto us at such a time like this. Father, we surrender ourselves unto you and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that humility will become a trademark in our lives, oh God. Father God, where we have been proud, you know, pride has caused us at times not to be able to listen to the instructions that you give to our lives, our Father. But today we return, oh God, that through your Holy Spirit, may you help us to be humble. May you help us to follow your instructions. May you help us, oh God, to hearken unto the commands that you give unto us, our Father. We know it is by grace that we are able to live for you, Jehovah. Therefore, we pray today that you continue to help us, our Father, in this walk of faith. I commit my viewers this morning before you. And Lord, I pray that Jehovah Father, even in our places of work, in our businesses, our Father, may we become letters of humility that will be read, O oh God. We thank you and we honor you, Jehovah King of glory. Be exalted. Bless my viewer this morning. Bless everything they lay their hands to do because I know your God was promised to bless the works of our hands. Be exalted and be honored for this is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. And I leave you with this saying that humility is not a weakness. It is a strength. Exercise that strength and it will take you places. God bless you so, so much. Amen.